everybody, I'm Danny with GlossyPatterns.com and I'm going to show you how to do pressed flower art, um, which is basically just sandwiching pressed flowers in between um, two pieces of glass. There's two different ways that I'm going to show you how to do it. The first is the most simple. Um, if you are not a stained glass artist um, and you were looking to do, start out with something easy, this is the one to start out with. It's just putting two panels together. The second option is for when you want to solder a pressed flower to stained glass, just regular stained glass. Um, this is my drop of sunshine uh, pattern that you can get at glossypatterns.com. So I've got two projects ready to go. And the first technique, which is the technique with the stained glass, I have these two pieces of sun that I'm gonna to put together. I've already cleaned the glass. <laughs> That's super important um, because otherwise you're going to sandwich fingerprints in between the glass. So with this method, I do not need glue. I'm just going to arrange my flower right here. And the reason I don't need glue for this is because um, this is a small piece. It's not going to go anywhere. Be really gentle because it's easy for the petals to tear. And then once I get to the center, I kind of just move the blade and push down. If you just try to rip it, rip it all the way across, um, it'll tear the flower. So this one's ready for the second step. Now, this is important, and this is why this method is different from just the normal panel method. Notice that the foil around the edge is very thin. This is the smallest size of foil that you can get. Um, I think it's 5 30 seconds. And the reason I do it like this is because, as you can see by this one, this piece is just foil around it. There's, it has not been soldered. Notice how thick this line is around there. If I did that on this piece, the, so the border would be thicker than the border around the whole piece. And actually you can see here, so what I did with this one was I used half inch foil for this one. And then I took my razor blade and I cut a whole bunch of it back, but I didn't do it evenly. And that's why on the back, luckily it is the back, <laughs> um, it's thicker. And because it's thicker, you can see it inside. See that, how it's not even? From the front looking back, you can see that foil. Also, the foil is copper um, because they don't make half inch foil that's silver backed. So I didn't like that either. So I don't do this method anymore. Instead, you can see that this one looks a lot cleaner. It's silver on the inside, the foil's even, and that is because I used the smallest foil size around these thin pieces of glass. And then I'm gonna use, the, I think this is 3 8 thickness to put these together. I'm gonna, so they'll be foiled twice, but then it'll be the correct width um, for your regular stained glass project. Okay, so now the next step, you have to use this on um, all the flowers. I've already done it to the ones that I have lined up here. Try not to bump them. This protects it from fading um, because it, these are real flowers. So <laughs> um, especially if you're hanging these in the window, they are eventually going to turn brown. And I would assume that even with this, they still will turn brown someday. I haven't seen it yet, but this will help protect it. So I'm just gonna go spray this real quick and come right back. All right, I've sprayed the flower on both sides. So now I'm just gonna line it up on there. Now I could glue this flower in here and that would make it a little easier, uh, but it is another step. Um, the glue takes several hours to dry. And so for this particular piece, I don't. I just arrange it, got it, okay. 
now we're going to clamp it together. I got these clamps on Amazon. They're really cheap. And I will put a link to all of my supplies um, on in the YouTube description. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, um, just go to glassypatterns.com, click on the YouTube link, and you'll be able to find it there. All right, we're ready to go. I'm gonna do one more just in case. Okay, so now we're taking our somewhat, oops, not that one, that is the wrong one. So now we're gonna foil it again. Whatever you do, and if you're using this pattern, don't start your seam um, on this part because this is the outside of the sun drop. You don't want that seam showing up. So I start on the edge. This part can be a bit tricky <laughs> with all the clamps getting in your way. So now we just have to um, scrape down that foil, make sure it has a good stick. These are the best tool, by the way. <laughs> I have tried other things and this is the best and you can find them anywhere, so it's awesome. So this is ready to go. I've already got all of my other um, pieces ready to solder. So all I have to do is solder that. I'm not gonna get into soldering, grinding, and cutting in this tutorial. Um, there's lots of videos about that. We're just gonna stick to flowers for now. All right. So next up is this guy. I have already sprayed these flowers. So I'm just going to be arranging them where I want, and then I'm gonna glue them. And this is hard. <laughs> so here is another version of this I did, which I ruined. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yes, you can. See that glue? And then there's some here too. Um, I didn't do a good job with this glue, and when you're using clear glass, it shows up. When you're using a colored stained glass for the, for the back, it doesn't really show up, which is one of the reasons I like doing this. Um, and by the way, so this is uh, stained glass on the back, but on the front, it's framing glass. And you can get framing glass for free at your local picture framing stores because they have scraps that they just throw away. The only important thing to consider is that you don't want the glass with UV protective coating on it because it scratches really easily. So make sure when you ask them um, for glass that you specific, ugh, can't talk, specifically say not with that coating on it. All right, so I'm gonna cut that guy off. And I'm gonna position him. That looks good. I think he needs to come down just a little bit more. Um, all of these flowers and plants I got on Etsy. It's the only place I've ever gotten them. I haven't even looked elsewhere. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so now we are going to glue. I might use that later. I get the Gorilla Glue. And I like to get them in these little minis because working with glue gets really annoying after you've been using the same tube for a while. Um, it tends to get all gunked up. So I just like these little ones. So I'm gonna use a Q-tip, dip it in there, get some glue. And I'm gonna be very careful to only get this on the back of the flower. We don't want it smushing out.
All right, so now it's going to take a couple hours for these to dry, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, and so let me show you one more thing to avoid. Here it is. So this is what makes gluing so hard. When, the more pieces you have, the more you are at risk for something like this happening. See that leaf right there? Um, it was over here attached to something and then after I sandwiched everything together it came loose and then went right on top of that flower which stinks <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that um, so that's why be really careful with your gluing if you have a lot of extra foliage um, like I think that is a loose leaf right there as well possibly try to glue them down but obviously without putting too much glue on there or you can trim off anything that looks like it might come loose later on. All right, so I'm gonna come back after this is all dry. All right, so it is now dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. The fern didn't really um, get glued down. I didn't put enough on it because I was afraid of it squishing out. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get this to stay just with pressure. Now, since this whole outside edge is going to be exposed like this, I am going to start the seam at the bottom. You can see that I have the seam right there on this one. So actually to adjust these a little bit. as possible otherwise we're going to do a lot of trimming later on <laughs> I like to press this as I go For the sake of this tutorial, we are going to patina this um, after I solder, which honestly, I think for some reason the pressed flowers just look better with the copper patina anyway. And you can see in the background that there's a silver one here. I did not patina that. And then these are patinaed. So for the top, what I do is a fold. You can see how that is still sticking up. So I'm gonna come in here, push that in so it's like that. And then I will fold this over and we'll do a cool little soldering finish that will help hide that fold at the end. All right, so it's done. And you can see that I have some trimming to do. Um, you can see through the glass that this is not even right here, so I'll probably trim that up. And it looks like I'll need to trim um, this tab right here as well. But first, gotta push this down. You wanna get a real good scrape on this because all of this is gonna show through um, in the soldering. Definitely want to scrape this down really nice because these wrinkles will show up during the soldering process. And you want these, the whole goal of soldering this is you want it to look like metal. It adds strength, but um, just giving someone glass that's taped together seems a little strange. <laughs> All right, 
looks good. All right, so now I am going to razor blade this because you can see that there's a tab right there. So I'm gonna take that out. Now, as far as um, foiling and trimming goes, square shapes are much easier. Um, so if you're new, I would recommend um, starting with a square shape instead of trying to do something like this. All right, I've got my soldering iron up to heat. So now I'm gonna take flux. And by the way, it's really important if you're gonna work with pressed flowers to use gel flux. This is it. And I will put a link to that in the description. Gel flux is thicker, it's higher quality, it doesn't run all over the place. And when you are when you have glass that is sandwiched together, you run the risk of that flux getting inside, um, which I've heard a lot of people, um, I've heard that has happened to a lot of artists. Um, so gel flux, is the bomb. <laughs> I'm gonna go all the way around all of the edges. And the type of solder I'm using is 6040 solder, which is the main solder for stained glass. If you just even Google stained glass solder, that's what you're gonna come up with. All right. If you're considering getting into this um, and you're not a stained glass artist, meaning you have not cut glass before, soldered before, or anything like that, um, there's a part of this process that you did not see and that was grinding. Um, after you cut the glass, you have to use a diamond bit grinder to smooth down the edges and make sure that your shapes line up. Um, some people don't use a grinder. Instead, they use, um, oh, I forget the name of it. It's like a block, like a sanding block for stained glass. Um, they do that instead. It takes a lot longer. If you're gonna do it that way, I'd recommend only doing square shapes because then your cutting is more accurate. Um, and so you're not gonna have to grind as much glass down. However, I definitely recommend getting a grinder if you plan on doing a lot of this because it's the, it's the best. Okay, so we now want to finish off this folded area. So I am just going to get a bead of solder and just tap it. This makes it look more like a nice metal border and less like tape. There we go. Okay. So now all we need to do is add a hanger to this. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. I soldered the wrong piece. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's try that again. Actually, you know what? I will just go ahead and continue and show you how to do it on this one because um, we don't want to waste anyone's time here. So what I used to do is I used to bend my own wire hangers, which is what I did for this one. And what I would do is I would take something like this and just bend it around there. And then I would get, that would make the circle for me. Um, now I have turned into a lazy bones. I got this pack on Amazon and I just love it because all the sizes are big. Um, so let's see what size we want. That looks good to me. I will include that link in my description. All right, so now I'm just going to cut off a little piece of this. <clears throat> Wire is really thick. All right, so there we go. Looks good. Now I need a thin piece of glass. You can also just use the framing glass if that's all you've got. I'm gonna line that up there. Get some flux on this. 
And since I am going to patina this piece, which means to change the color of the solder, this is patinaed, this is not patinaed, I have to flux this whole ring because it will have to, I then have to um, do a layer of solder around it so that the patina will change the color of the jump ring. And I believe these rings are just um, stainless steel. I don't remember for sure, but that link will be in my description. All right, so now I'm just going to take a little bit of solder. Oops, totally missed. This is a delicate process because the piece will want to move around. I'm just going to tap each side. All right, so now I'm gonna go around this ring. I think I got it all, it's kind of hard to tell. Awesome. Okay, now we can patina. All right, so we're ready to patina. I'm gonna do copper patina, and this is hard to work with. Um, what you want from copper patina is for it to be nice and shiny, but you can see here that this has more of like an aged look. Um, this one's probably a better example. You can see how it looks, kind of got some dark spots, and that happens if your piece is not extremely clean and shiny. What we have to do is take this fine wool, whatever this is, and scrape all of this down. And what we're doing is removing all of these dark spots. Every single dark spot that's left on this silver will show up um, with the copper. It's easier said than done, but try not to touch any part that you've just um, cleaned. Looks like it might be good enough. So now I'm going to use quick clean. This is, removes flux, uh, it cleans really well. However, it is like $20, which kind of stinks, um, how, but it's lasted me over a year. Um, you could probably just try this as well. I know some stained glass artists use that successfully. All right, so now that I've cleaned the one side, I'm not gonna set it back down on this because um, it's dirty and you have to be really careful of course, now I forgot which side I cleaned. Good job, Danny. <laughs> you can also use a toothbrush for this part. Ugh, see how dark this is? That tells me that it still was not clean enough. Copper patina is so frustrating. Um, I've also heard, and I did have some success with this, that if you put the patina and the glass piece in the fridge for 20 minutes before you do this, you get a better, shinier, brighter finish. Um, no idea if that's, you know, true. It, it did seem to work when I did it, um, but I only tried it once. Now that I think about it though, that was my most successful patina ever. So could could be something to that. All right, we are done. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know.